Hey everybody, I'm Ramona Mejia, here to bring you the latest Little PG news, uh, reviews, and of course, author interviews. This is episode number 151 of the show. Thank you very much for hanging out with us for such a long time. Um, to this week, I have four new Lit RPG reviews just for your folks at home, and that includes uh, Level Up, The Knockout, book number one in that series. Uh, this is actually, again, the um, side series set in the same universe as Level Up, but it's a different main character, uh, same author, but also with a co-author. Uh, also going to be reviewing the a mage rising the chronicles of hearst book number two after that it'll be ipsity uh the stroke towers book number five after that'll be the graystone chronicles book number five world at war which is oddly enough the end of that series uh so if, you, if you've been following it i'm sure you're more than happy to, to check out to see how that one ends we'll let you know how what uh, what we thought about that but before we get into that we're going to a little rpg news And in Little Bit News, we're going to begin with the first story, which is uh, about me. I guess uh, Planet Bound, that uh, sci-fi light Little Bit story that I wrote, um, is out as an audiobook right now. I have a little trailer for you to show off that I made uh, to show off where the sample is, if you'll take a listen. I look up and see Crewman Yo standing over me. I feel a sense of relief at the sight of her. Thanks. For a minute there, I was afraid I was going to be done in by some rope. She smiles and opens her mouth to say something, but the same robotic voice from before comes on over the speakers and yells, All hands! All hands! Incoming missile fire! Brace for impact! The rest of the sentence cuts off as the ship is hit by something so violently that both crewman Yo and myself are knocked over, and not even our magnetic boots are enough to keep us upright. The universe seems to slow to a crawl, and my vision is clouded by a red, warning haze as an explosion down the hall sends fire and shrapnel toward us. So there it is, folks. That's uh, that's the wonderful sample from uh, Narrated by Jill Smith for Planet Bound, written by me. Uh, so if you want to go check it out, we'll link the show notes for you guys to go look at an audible. And appreciate you taking the time to, to listen to me. Uh, on to other Little Bit new stories, we have Dave Wilmarth, author of The Grace John Chronicles and The Dark Elf Chronicles. He, he actually, I just realized when I was writing this, I'm like, he names everything Chronicles. Hmm. Uh, but he's running an ad during an ESPN event, uh, the pizza bowl. Uh, this is the first instance of a little bit of author running an ad during normal television stuff. I actually think it's really neat. Uh, the author is, is being very creative in his marketing for his novels and his series. Now that the Grace of Chronicles is technically finished for now. Um, this is, this is, but this is kind of cool. Uh, he, these are his announcements in his own words. I actually decided to read this in the voice of Arnold Schwarzenegger, just to make it more fun. This is not how Dave Wilmarth actually sounds, but here we go. This is what he said in his his posting. I've commissioned a book trailer for Greystone 1, and it'll be running its first TV commercial on ESPN. As far as I know, this will be the first TV commercial for a lit RPG game like book. Yeah. No, it is not during the Super Bowl. This is where it comes. This is where the silly comes in. Apparently, we have a national pizza team. Yep. That's right, pizza, and it seems they do acrobatics. And they are having an event Saturday at noon EST. Don't make other plans. I'm hoping that trailer runs during the freestyle pizza dough twirling event. Okay, that might have sounded a little more Yoda, uh, but you know, there you go. <laughs> that was the announcement that Dave Willemarth made on Facebook for the show notes uh, for both uh, that actual announcement and also the link for the pizza event uh, on ESPN. You can watch it all and it's all apparently free. So we'll have both links in the show notes. Uh, next story we have is for Vasily Manko. I don't think I'm going to do an accent this time. It's not going to be, it doesn't turn out that well, apparently. Uh, author, Vasily Manko is the author with the Shaman series. He recently posted an update for his 2019 plans. He says, hi, all. Uh, I'll tell you about my plans for 2019. This year should be the most productive for me. Two books have already been written, Galacticon 2 and Invasion 1. I immediately will. I immediately write Galacticon 3 to logically close the series. There will be Invasion 2, and if everything goes well, The Alchemist 1, uh, and in quotation marks, he says real RPG. So I'm thinking like real life RPG. Um, there you go. Then he says, uh, these are the books that I write. In addition, this year, I will present to your attention the works that won my best, my literally... My literary contest, Fantasy and Liturgy, it is very likely the Bard 3 will also be in 2019. So those are two separate concepts, I think. He he run a, a contest in Russia, I believe, um, taking submissions for uh, fantasy and liturgy stories. Um, and then he finishes off with, thus, the year 2000 will be for me and my readers the most intense of the books. So there we go. Uh, I kind of feel like I've 
in my regular voice, it's an accent with uh, that particular translation. Remember Vasily Manko, Russian, he translates everything, Google translates and posts it. So a few technical things don't sound correctly, obviously, but uh, it's fun to actually re- to see what the author was going to be doing in 2019. And we actually get to see he, he has Galacticon um, 2 written. It's just being translated. So a lot of fans have been interested in that. He has a couple of new series, including Invasion, and apparently uh, another one called Alchemist uh, that he's planning to write or has written and it's being translated. So all kinds of fun stuff coming from 2019 from Vasily Mahenko. Um, that's it for news out now. These are the stories that have come out recently. I haven't had a chance to look at them or read them. Um, but they, here we go. It's starting with Towns and Towers, Artifacts, Aliens, and Adventures. This is the second book in this little bit series. The first book, I think, was written, I want to say, like a year ago. Um, so if you enjoy that series... Book two is out. Also out as a book two is uh, The Realm Between Two Brothers, a Little Bridge Saga, book two in that series by Phoenix Gray. Um, Shattered City, a Little Bridge slash lit FPS book uh, called Call of the Reality, book number one. That is out now. It definitely seems more first person shiri with um, some RPG mechanics, maybe. Uh, actually, I haven't read it. Skim through it just to make sure. It looked like it could be a little RPG because it's calling itself that. And it looked like there are, are some rich hands, but it definitely focused more on the um, shootery aspects of it. So we'll have to wait and see what it actually turns out to be. Um, also out right now is the third book in the Alternia online series called Undying Sacrifice. Uh, and also the second book in the Idol System series, which is actually a really fun, interesting um, storyline. It's called Idol Systems Book 2, The Rogues. So there we go. Uh, also out as... A, the Liberty story is re um, alternative world online volume one. So those are all stories that came out this last week. Um, we'll see which ones end up being interesting and not. Um, there are no new letter audiobooks audio books that I could find, uh, unfortunately. So, you know, just the one, I, the, you know, yeah, so there you go. Um, in upcoming Liturgy, we have on January the 11th, only a couple days from now, Dungeon Wars, uh, by Jeffrey Falcon Logan. This is supposed to be a new arc in his, um, in his Slime Dungeon Chronicle character series. That one, I, that, the Slime Dungeon Chronicle is apparently is all, all actually finished. This is supposed to be a new arc with some of the same characters. We'll have to wait and see what it actually turns out to be, though. It'll be out on January the 11th, 2019. Uh, January the 14th, Bitter, book number five, will be out. On January the 19th, it'll be The Steel Hounds, the Atara Chronicles, book number one. January 22nd, uh, this is new to list. It'll be Apocalypse 2020, into the Black. This is the third book in that series, if I'm not mistaken, and it is not to be mistaken for Into the Black, written by Stuart Gross. Uh, same name, different covers, different storylines, the whole thing. So um, it'll be Apocalypse 2020, Into the Black, on January 22nd. Uh, on the 23rd of January, it'll be Volper, Al Forome, uh, book number one. Uh, it's another translated work. On January 29th, it'll be Neverfall, book number two, Catacombs. On January the 30th, it'll be Hope Engine. On February the 14th, it'll be the fourth book in the Good Guys series, For the Loot. On February 24th, it'll be Collide Everborn, book number two. February 26th, Cat's Game book. Uh, And March 25th, The Final Trial, which is the third book in the main Level Up series. Um, So there we go. And I believe that's the book where you're actually going to see maybe multiple characters from those two Level Up series maybe combine and and make cameos and stuff. Okay, on to new releases and reviews. And in new releases and reviews, we're going to begin with Level Up, The Knockout, book number one, a little bitty series, written by, I forgot to look it up, darn it, um, Dan uh, Sergul- Sergulanov, I'm totally saying that incorrectly, um, somebody noted on <laughs> how to say it right, and I forgot to look it up before I recorded, so I apologize, Dan, uh, man, Max uh, Lagno. You have two co-authors on this. Um, it is 403 pages, $3.99, it is available on Kindle Limited, here's the author's description. Mike Hagen, an American nicknamed Crybaby, become, became one of the chosen to be given an augmented reality interface. However, his favorite game was an MMA fighter, possibly for the reason that he'd never fought in real life and the interface adapted it to him. Will Hagen be able to use it right, and will it help him crawl out of the jury pit of his existence? There we go. Not a, uh, an honest pre- uh, premise. Um doesn't quite go into detail like what the story is about necessarily, but if you're a fan of the Level Up series, you are probably already know a little bit about, you know, the concept behind the story. Um, 
This is a side story written in the Level Up universe with a different main character, Mike Kagan. Uh, the novel is based on the short story written by one of the authors, uh, Dan uh, Sergolanoff, and published in Magic on Books, um, short story collection called Urine Game, book number two. The beginning two chapters of this novel are actually just a slightly modified version of that short story, um, and that's not really a bad thing, to be honest. I actually like that short story quite a bit. It was my probably my favorite of that short story collection, if I recall correctly. Um, and I think one of the things it does better than the main series is that because it's based on that short story, you actually get to the RPG stuff a lot faster than the main series. Um, so that's a, that's a plus in my opinion. You get to all the leveling up and all the, you know, notifications and stuff really quickly in the story. Um, the, this novel differentiates itself from the main series, mostly by being much more combat focused. Uh, the novel starts off with the, with the normal, what was me set up? detailing explicitly just how big of a loser the main character is. Um, then when he gets his RPG interface, he gets the chance to fulfill his fondest dream of learning how to fight. Um, and if you've read the main series, you actually recognize that this is an interface that's very different from that series, from, from the main series, I should say. Um, but it still fits in with the like universe's lore. Like There's very much a, a reason why those two interfaces are very different. Um, from there, it's a, a slice of life story following how the main character trains in various fighting styles and figures out how to level up by winning fights um of course he also gets into a lot of trouble because just being violent in real life does tend to cause problems um from from that and some of the twists in the story were very unexpected like there's generally some um, some moments in the story where like wow that's that's where they send the main character you're like hmm that is a that's a choice um and so like the storyline but it's where from a very much is just slice of life and just be aware that going into the novel um don't expect like some huge plot line it very much follows the same kind of um slice of life conceptualization that the other level up series does um and for me that's perfectly fine i'm, I'm more than happy to just follow this guy as he does stuff and he has he trains and, and does things it can be very fascinating very interesting um, I sh will note, though, that this is kind of an interesting concept because, um, a small note, neither of the authors had ever been in the United States before writing this novel, uh, and the story is 100% is set in the USA, in the United States of America. Um, I don't remember specifically if they name a, a specific location where the story takes place, um, but uh, the authors both readily admit at the back of this book and at the back of back of, I think it was book two in the main level series that uh, neither one of them in the US before they wrote this and they never expected it to be translated and for Americans to actually read it. And so they're very much at the end, like, we are totally sorry if, if some of the things in this story don't sound correctly. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, and they're totally correct. Um, the story is written with a lot of stereotypes about Americans, various uh, ethnicities, um, the American prison system and culture here. You can tell some of it is picked up from movies. And that also kind of gives the story kind of this trauma. And I'm going to be totally upfront with you guys. There are a couple places in this novel where there are like ethnic stereotypes. And I'm like, hmm, that's an interesting statement. Uh, and from the author's point of view, um, if, if, if what they've gleaned from American life and, and, and the city of the United States, uh, everything they've learned from like movies and television, I'm like, oh yeah, that totally makes sense why those statements would be in there about like Hispanics and African American people. Um, and again, that there's literally just like a couple lines where it's like, Oh, like all Hispanics, they dress like this. And he kind of describes like this cholo outfit. And I'm like, Oh yeah. If you're, if you're pulling everything you know about Hispanic people from <laughs> popular media, like movies and television. Yeah. That probably feels like a true thing. But, but at the same time, the story does balance things out in, and not intentionally being totally stereotypical and that these characters, that are, are sort of terrorist type at the same time have bigger personalities and it's revealed later like oh they he's not really a cholo he's just pretending and you know other things like that and and, and so um but there are definitely moments in the story where i'm like oh that is that is that seems like it's out of a movie uh especially some of the later scenes like oh i can name the movie that this is probably being pulled from and i get for me it kind of gave it a little bit of trauma. like oh this is what other countries think of United States and Americans and our systems and the way we interact. Like, oh, okay. That's, that's very curious. Like, oh, okay. Neat. So there you go. Just a small note. Um, overall, the, those, some people are really going to like the action in this novel because there's a lot of boxing and MMA fighting, um, and training scenes and leveling up for me. I kind of actually just want to say that I like the, 
main series a little bit better. Um, and I'm not saying this is bad in Witcher, right? This is, gets a good score for me. Um, the main series, though, I think because it is so non-combat oriented, that it kind of forced the author to do some very interesting and original things with an RPG progression system. Um, and I, it's one of the things I probably liked the most about the main series for Level Up is that it feels very different. I mean, the most of our stories, um, we get action, we get adventure, that's kind of a big thing. Um, and you get a lot of combat sometimes. But the main Level Up series has has so few like combat scenes that they feel really special when you show up. And in this one, most of it is combat. Most of the big things that happen are very combat oriented, very com boxing, training, um, physically conflicting kind of moments that are, that are the highlight. Um, and there's less social RPG um, advancement or progression, I should say. Um, and so the two, to the, so I guess you could say in some ways, the two series kind of um, op are opposite or mirror each other in, in some respects. Um, and for me, I think I, I like the originality and the novelness of the main level series um, a little bit more. And that's, that's all it really comes down to. The, the um, fighting in the story is still very interesting, um, and it just feels like a little more familiar. Um, it's still an interesting story, especially for like the Level Ups universe in general. And for me, I had a good time with it. I get the score of 7.3 to 10 for me. Had a nice time. That's Level Up, The Knockout, book number one, Liberty Series, with a score of 7.3 out of 10. There we go. Okay, next we have A Mage Rising, Chronicles of Hearst, book number two, a lit RPG saga written by Thomas Whipple. It is 428 pages, $4.99, not available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Vol has brought the people of Efton to a new place they can build upon and protect. A new place they can call home. It's a place others can join them in their freedom of, of oppression. With this new place to live, Vol understands the responsibility he has to protect those that reside there. But in Hurst, if you wish to keep anything, you must be willing to fight to hold on to it. What challenges will he face, and will he be strong enough to resist the unknown threats that he will encounter? Okay, that's the novel description. Okay, um, I almost like this novel. Um, it's not a bad novel in any way should perform. It's not even boring. It's just that he just misses being good for me, and there are several reasons why I took it into. Uh, but first, no questions, Celebrity G. Um, all the game mechanics from book one are still here. They're all carried over very well. Um, in addition to that, there's additional mechanics about crafting and kingdom building, kingdom building I should say, um, that are handled very well. So kudos there. Um, I also enjoyed the character development path that the main character goes through and the intelligent use of the magic skills. Uh, combat is also pretty good when it happens. Um, however, there are several, several things that made this a challenging uh, read from, or at least challenging for me to get into. One... Um, it's been a really long time since I read book one. Um, and since um, there is no recap um, of the events in book one and book two, it was hard for me to kind of remember who everybody was. And, and the author's really upfront about this. And like, I think part of the novel description in the beginning of, the, of this book is, you should have read book one fairly recently, otherwise you might want to go back and review it. So it's not, it's not the author's fault. This is really just on me. And that it's been such a long time. Like I believe the author published book two only like a couple months, like three months after book one. So it really wasn't a long time. So this is on me because I didn't read this right away when it first was published. Um, and that's also part of this week in that there weren't a lot of releases. And so a lot of the books that are here this week um, after Level Up are just like things that I were in the back catalog for me. So part of this is on me. But at the same time, I didn't remember who everybody was in this story. Um, and the author does a decent job of like giving names and descriptions and sort of contextualization, contextualizing who everybody is. Um, but it really took a good portion of like the beginning part of that novel to recall relationships and plot points. Um, also, the first part of this novel is full of kingdom building. So if that's what you want to read about, perfect. This is going to be right up your alley. Um, except for me, I'm like the first like 20 ish percent of the story is just kingdom. Like the story really does like jump right into it from like the first couple of pages. And it continues on with all that until about the 20% mark or like 18, 20% when you get your first combat scene. And for me, I'm like, Oh, that's, that's a really long time to wait before you get some action. Um, and for me, that was a little bit of a drawback, not to say that the kingdom was done incorrectly or, or poorly. It's really nice. They said, Oh, I wish there would have been like a, a a quick comment scene or something early on the story just to like hook you a little bit more, especially again, because I had a time remembering everybody. So I couldn't connect with the story from, from like the character development angle, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Um, 
Oh, um, this one's probably a bigger issue for me. Outside of combat, there never seemed to be any real challenges to the main character or his plans. And I think this is something that carries over from book one a little bit. Um, I, I remember like noting that in that first review for that novel as well. Um, there are some nice fights, um, but that kind of seems like the only challenge that the main character experiences. Everything else in the novel really seems to flow um, well for the main character without like really him anything really being difficult and there's nothing really wrong with that kind of storyline it's just that for me i've always when, when a main character doesn't seem to struggle to accomplish his goals for me again this is totally personal um his successes don't seem as important or as um or or as as validated i should say or or whatever word you want to use um but those those successes don't seem as as cool as if uh, unless he's like super so I, I really appreciate the, the victories where the main character had to like slug through a bunch of challenges to get there and he learned something and he he grew as an individual or whatever the case is and in this case in the story i didn't see a lot of it. like the main character had goals he has plans and he just kind of finds allies as he goes along very conveniently uh that also go with his goals and funding to to advance those goals and and again um, i'm not saying anything the story just perfectly go with the main character's way, but there are very, like, very few um, things that seem challenging to the main character outside of combat. Um, and maybe that's just the way I saw it. But for me, that kind of like brought it down a little bit for me. Um, also, let's see, the last point is probably there's a harem aspect that's introduced in the story that I don't recall existing in book one. Again, again maybe because it's been a while since I read book one. Um, and all, even though the, all the characters haven't shifted or anything, um, I don't recall that harem aspect actually existing in book one. Again, I may be mistaken. Um, but for me, because um, this is the first time I'm, I'm seeing it in book two, it felt a little bit forced, especially at the beginning. As the story goes on, you get a little more interaction between the, the characters that make up that harem. Um, but it, it didn't really add anything to the story for me. And it kind of felt like it was just kind of chasing a trend a little bit. Maybe like that, they're like, oh, there's a lot of good harem stories out there that people seem to enjoy. Maybe we'll, you know, put that in the story. I, I mean, I could be totally incorrect. It could be something that was planned from the very beginning of the story. And I'm just not recalling the setup for it. Um, but for me, it just, it didn't really fit uh, with the story for me. It felt like it was a kind of a distraction. Um, there's nothing graphic in the harem aspects of it. So it really is just like relationship. Like main character has a couple females that are um, interested in him and they kind of form this relationship. And there's like fade to black kind of scenes with them being intimate, but nothing, nothing graphic in that shape. Uh, but for me, it just didn't really hit. It came kind of shy of, of being good for me. Gets a score of six out of 10. Uh, that's a mage rising chronicles of Hearst book. Number two, a little bit saga with a score of six out of 10. So there we go. Okay. Next, uh, Ipsity, the stroke tower book number five. And I might be saying that name incorrectly. Um, but that's, how I'm going to say it, uh, by Tony Corden book five in the stroke tower series it is a whopping 575 pages four dollars 79 cents it is available on kindle limited here's the author's description actually um most of this is not that i'm looking at it again most of the the novel description is actually recalling the other books in the series i'm gonna skip right down to the one that talks about this novel in Ipsity, Leah discovers that the syndicate inserted a dangerously modified chip in her mother, and the police are actively investigating her abilities. Her neural architecture is continuing to change, and her enemies are becoming more numerous and determined. Also, she works to rescue her boyfriend, continue her studies at MIT, understand the broader conspiracy, save her mother, complete quest in three virtual worlds, build her growing empire, and set her AI free. That's only that's literally two sentences in that does the novel description, folks. Um, and I, I think she actually does a really good job of, of, of telling you that this is a crowded, um, fast paced, uh, story in a lot of different ways. Okay. Uh, review time. Um, this is a good novel. It is, uh, this entire series has been very nice, very good. And this is another good entry in the series. Um, there's, uh, so there was a super big action pack ending at the end of book four. And I wasn't really sure if book four would match up, but it does. It does a really good job of like continuing on those, those real life storylines and all those other virtual storylines with all those games as well. Um, but the story as it continues, just getting more and more complicated. There's actually another game that's introduced in this novel. It's, it's, not, it's really at the very end, so you don't actually see it too much. But it looks like there's going to be a fourth big game section that's introduced the series in addition like the the really big um three that are currently here right now um and again there are separate plot lines for each game including um the real life storyline the fantasy game storyline there's a sci-fi game futuristic space storyline there's a steampunk storyline for a steampunk vr game 
Um, and then there's going to be a new one that's introduced and probably expanded more in, in the next book. But I'm like, this is getting super crowded. Um, and for some people, it may be a little too much. Like if you're reading the series, you're probably getting used to it. But even for me, I was like, wow, this is a lot of stuff. Um, but the author doesn't abandon anything. Uh, and so the author really does go out his way to, to make sure that all these plot lines were filled. And it makes the story feel so full. Uh, and probably maybe a little overly at times. Like it feels like if I had this schedule, I'd probably go crazy that the, the main character has like every single instant of her day and night is filled with like fulfilling these plot lines. So, um, but as usual, she gets through it all because she uses her intelligence and her mind and her way to talk her way past obstacles and object, uh, objections, which is always a highlight for me. This is a very smart main character. There's a very smart way of solving her problems. It's not just always beat you up necessarily. Um, so always really good stuff. For me, the story, the story I like the most of all of them is definitely the real life version. Um, it's getting a little um, cyberpunky, and that's totally cool with me because again, the author still is continuing all the game storylines, uh, including like, the RPG ones. Um, so it's still a little bit for me. But the one I kind of like the most is definitely the one that goes in the real world because those that that storylines feel like it has consequence for the main character in a lot of ways. So for me, still enjoyable. Um, you get to score a 7.4 out of 10. Uh, Ipsity, the Stroke Tower book number five with the score 7.4 out of 10. There we go. Okay, last review. Uh, the Greystorm Chronicles book number five, Ruled at War by Dave Wilmarth. And what a cute, that's probably the, the cutest cover that I've ever seen out of every story <laughs> that I think I've ever read. Like this is the most adorable cover ever. I mean, you have Fibble in the middle and a bunch of dragons and cookies and too, too delightful, especially with the name Ruled at War that just kind of contradicts in that, that same cuteness. Okay, it is uh, 300. 55 pages. It is four dollars and nine cents. It's available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. King Alexander and his guildmates have expanded Elysia into a formidable kingdom. Their ongoing battle against the Dark One and the and the Drow Wizards is escalating. Alexander works to bring together the elves, the dwarves, and human kingdoms to establish the alliance proposed by the Dragon King. But the dark magic of the Drow's has infiltrated even their highest offices, blocking his efforts. War comes once again to the gates of the keep, and Alexander must find a way to defend his citizens before we can go on the offensive and take the fight to the strongholds of his enemies. All of Io, citizens and players alike, are pulled into war as the forces of darkness strive to destroy or enslave every surface city. Olympus is under siege, and the threat intensifies as doctors determine it's necessary to wake Jules from her months-long slumber. Jules and Alexander prepare to meet face to face for the first time with a little help from their friends. Join the Greystone Guild in this epic conclusion of a little over detail of magic, monsters, wizards, and dragons. And that's right, folks. The author says that this is the end of the series. There you go. Um, according to the author, again, this is the end of the series. He plans to develop other series and even start writing some new stories. So yay. Um, however, if you want to continue this one, buy many, many copies. Uh, so he's forced to write more Greystone Chronicles. Like generally, that's the biggest motivation for, for an author. Um, if it's a successful, successful series um, that has just tons of outcry and from fans to continue it on, I'm, I'm sure the author will be more than happy to write another arc for these people. Uh, but for now... Um, this, this may be it for you, for, for these groups. Um, and it's a great ending to the series. I definitely think it's the best, if not one of the, one of the best, if not the best um, stories in the series. It does all the stuff that fans of Kenba love, kingdom building, community building, um, big epic battles, um, um, and development of relationship between the groups. Like, I think the relationship between the group and the characters in the matter is probably the biggest high. It's the thing that I think connects um, most of the readers to the story. Like, every deal is fibble. Every deal has, like, favorite characters and the banter and the way the relationship play out. Um, on the combat side of things, this actually does a really good job. I think this is one of the best... Um, combat scenarios that that's probably been in the storyline um maybe except for book one but the way that it plays out it's not just all defense it's not all defending they actually go in the offensive which is described in the novel, in the novel description of the not spoiler um but i like the fact that the they went on the offensive uh for once and and there's an actual solid resolution to just about every single plot line that i could think of in the story and i mean serious like serious like none like non-confusing like oh this is definitely an end to this to these to these characters to these plot lines uh so it's it's unambiguous about this being an ending 
in a lot of different ways. And I don't think everybody's going to be satisfied necessarily with all the endings. Like there's, there's always somebody who's going to play about, Oh, I, I didn't like that ending. Um, but I think a lot of people are just going to be like, Oh yeah, that's, that feels satisfying to some degree. If, if not a hundred percent, um, for me, it was sad to kind of see the end of the series for a bunch of characters that I've enjoyed spending time with. And I wish there was more obviously, but every great journey has to come to an end sometimes. And hopefully the author will return to the series at some point in the future, maybe the kids of the main characters or something, or just them being older and, you know, having children or whatever the case is. There's lots of room for more stories, obviously if the author wants to come back to it. But for me, it was a great journey. I give it a score of eight out of 10. Had a good time with it. Uh, that's Greystone Chronicles, book number five, ruled at war, the score of eight out of 10. The end. And that's it. That is the whole show, ladies and gentlemen. We're completely done. Again, it was a very short week as far as like, there wasn't a lot of new things that came out. Um, and so I, I kind of went to the back catalog and got to catch up on some stories. I was, I was, I was very happy to have uh, gotten a chance to catch up and read on. So a lot of good things there. Um, so there you go. That's it. And folks, if you want to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Patreon, um, on our website at littlebitpodcast.com, plenty of places to follow us. So you can get the latest and the greatest reviews, news, and of course, these wonderful videos about uh, uh, me giving you um, my opinion on some lit RPG stuff that comes out on a weekly basis, folks. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook on uh, other groups on Facebook. We'll link in the show notes for all those things. But of course, you want to sort the podcast in any way, shape, or form, help keep the podcast free and and free from ads and all those great things that you guys enjoy. You can find all the ways to support us at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. But until then, folks, um, so we can hang out again, remember to create some litrpg. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>